so hello and uh, welcome to this talk. Uh, sorry for the delay in getting started. So I will be presenting a technique to compute controllers using reinforcement learning. Okay, so let's first look at how uh, traditional control design is typically done. Here I have a very uh, simple example of an unstable system. It has one state and one input. And the important thing here is I know the model of the system because this coefficient is two, the system is going to uh, blow up and we can see that if you simulate it, we see that its response constantly increases. Now, because we know the model of the system, we can design the controller so that it takes information about the state and tries to bring it back to, to the origin. So because this coefficient is two, if I feed back, I have to feed back something, and this sign is positive, I feed back something that is opposing that, and, and I choose a value like 1.5, so two minus 1.5 is 0 0.5, so it'll, it'll reduce the value of the state and bring it, bring it to the origin. Now this V that is over here is an exogenous input. It's usually zero, but I just used some random signal here. And you see now the system is uh, stabilized and for a random input, it gives a, a random out response. But the important thing is the system was stabilized. Now, when we go to reinforcement learning, the difference is that we do not have the model of the system. We do not have the full model of the system. So I'll just give an overview here and we'll get into the details in the next slide. Uh, the, the way we, because we do not have the model of the system, we excite the system with various inputs and evaluate the response of the system. And based on that, we, we update what we call here the actor. So in control systems and reinforcement uh, learning, there are similar uh, concepts, but but they use different terminology for that. So what we say as a controller in reinforcement learning is typically called an agent. And over here, the agent is a combination of this critic and actor. In control systems, we say system or plant. Here it's called an environment. And the control law is called a policy in reinforcement learning. Okay, so I'm going to um, just give an overview of how the controller is computed. It's not detailed, but I have everything here for you to understand how, how, this, uh, how this controller computation is done. So we start by assuming that the, the environment or the system has this model. So we do not know A or B. In, in, in control, when we're doing control design through, through either from first principles or, or using a, a tool like system modeler, we are able to get what A and B is. But over here, we do not know what A and B is, we, but we assume that the underlying system is this linear uh, time invariant system. It's, it's in discrete time. It's, it's, it's a vector difference equation. Okay, so in, when we design for the optimal control, this is the cost we are trying to minimize. It's a, it's a quadratic cost, which minimizes both this the states, which is X and the control input. So by minimizing X, we are driving the states to zero. And by minimizing U, we are making sure that the control, the control input doesn't blow up. Okay, and then Q and R is how we weight the, the states and inputs. So in, in control theory, the way this is done is, uh, in, the, in the background, a Riccati equation is solved. And that depends on the weights Q and R and A and B, and we get a gain matrix. Over here, we do not have that A and B. So uh, uh, based of this cost function, we, we have this Q function. Okay? So the Q function is also quadratic. And the way it's structured is that at each instant K, we have to make a decision. And okay, so, at, so the cost, is structured, uh, so the, the Q function, or it's called cost in control terminology, is structured so that, okay, we use this quadratic uh, uh, expression for both X and U. And then for all time instance, K plus one to infinity, we assume that we are using this optimal control 
law. Okay, so we are assuming that somehow we have computed this optimal uh, control gain G. So instead of U, I'm just using uh, minus GX gain. Now, once I have this relationship, and based on this assumption that XK plus one depends on XK and UK, I can do the substitution here. And I can get this whole Q function in terms of XK and UK. Okay, so based of this, now if I want to minimize Q, I want to choose a U that minimizes Q, I, I have to compute this partial derivative. So I work this out and then I can get U in terms of this sub matrices of what this is called the kernel matrix. Okay, so the kernel matrix is going to depend on A, B, Q, and R. And again, the situation here is we do not know A and B. So this is, we cannot compute it like this. Okay, so to get out of this impasse, we, we go back to this, this Q function and make two observations. One thing is that although the Q function is quadratic in X and U, if you expand it out, okay, so this, this kernel matrix appears linearly and there it has some properties like it is, it is uh, symmetric. So it has um, some D components, which depends on the number of, uh, in, uh, number of inputs and outputs. So, but in all, in terms of those components, it's linear. So that's the first um, observation we make. The next one is, okay, here I've written the Q function again, the same expression for this Q, Q function, I've rewritten it here. And then we see that this summation can also be written as a Q as the as the Q function, but now starting at XK plus one, and the input, instead of a, just a general input, I'm using the specific I, uh, minus G XK plus one as my, as my input, and that's how I get this Q function. So I bring this to the left-hand side, and then I use this linearity property, and I can write this equation here. Okay, so I have some, uh, I have a row matrix here in terms of these unknown S. And then on the right-hand side, I have this, this uh, quadratic cost. So this equation here is going to be the basis for the, for the, for the uh, re reinforcement learning controller. Okay, so let's see how that's done. Okay, so at, so we start by assuming some value for this optimal controller. It needs to be stabilizing, but we start by us. So that's one of the uh, um, uh, call feature or drop, but you got to start with some assumption for that controller. So we start with that assumption and we excite the input, uh, excite the system based on that input. So the system is at state XK and we excite it with this input UK and epsilon is a small noise. So that, you know, if it's zero, then it's, it doesn't turn out that we don't excite the system or to make it linearly, uh, to make the equations linearly independent. So starting from the system starts at some state XK and we excite it with this input and the system then moves on to a new state XK plus one. So I've, re I've rewritten that last equation here again. And it's in this equation, we see that we know XK, UK, and XK plus one. So we know all the terms here, except for this S terms. So once I do the simulation, D or more than D or D plus one, D or more times, I'll have D or more equations. And then I can get an estimate for what that S is based on least squares. And once I have that S, I can update my uh, control, uh, control law. And then I use this control law and repeat this process all over again. So what happens is it's a stabilizing controller we start with. The controller will be driving the system to the origin, but not in an optimal way, but after several simulations, it updates itself and gradually reaches the, the optimal controller. Okay, so all this has been uh, implemented in this, uh, in this uh, function. So let's look at an example. So here I have, uh, again, a very simple system with one state and one input. Okay, I'm just simulating it to see, to show what it's doing. So it starts with some state and at the next input and then at each sampling instant, the input U0, U1, and U2 is applied. The way it goes is U minus 0.3, the previous state. 
So u minus 0 0.3, the previous state, next time u1 minus 0 0.3, the previous state, and so on. Okay, so that's how the simulations are done. And let's, okay, so we're going to specify the system saying that, okay, that's my system and I'm going to start at the initial value of two. And then I'm going to design the controller. So I specify the system. This, these two are the weights. This is Q and this is R. I'm assuming e equal weights. And this is my initial controller gain. This, this has, the only thing this has to satisfy is that it stabilizes the system. The system is already stable. So I start with, zero gain and then I simulate it uh, for 25 instance. Okay, so we get this uh, systems model controller data object from which we can get a whole bunch of properties. So we can see where the gain finally converged to. Okay, and this uh, agree and this matches what was computed with LQ regulator gains. So this gain was computed with no knowledge of the system dynamics just by simulation but this one was computed um, knowing the model and uh, behind in the, in the background, a uh, Ricard equation was solved. Okay, now we can see how that gain converts to the optimal value. We started with from zero. Okay, so after, okay, we can also uh, see, it looks like after five simulations, it decided to update itself. It came to this new value. And in the next, after the next five, it, reach the optimal value. So you can also get after how many sampling instance the controller updated itself. Okay, we can see what was the inputs that were applied to the system. So you see up to this point, uh, yeah, the gain remained the constant, but the, but the system itself was moving towards the origin until the first, so all these are colored similarly because the gain here was the same, but the control inputs, different control inputs were applied and it eventually reads zero. Okay, so let's look at another example. This this one has, this is an example of a CSTR which has two states and one input. Okay, so again, I, it's just the same as before. I have the system, I'm starting with, from some initial uh, state of the system and this is my Q, how much I'm weighting the states. So I want the states, I've penalized the states um, really bad and uh, so this is so it will drive the states it gives more prior priority for the states than the control input and again here i've chosen the control gain starting at zero because the system is already stable okay so and i simulate it for 50 sampling instance and now you can see the gain values here so, so there are two gains and now the batch length looks like it was 10 and again after 20 oh yeah after after about 25 simulations, it it converged to the to the optimal value. Okay, and you can see how the how the states converge to the origin. So all over here, uh, that particular gain of zero was being used, and uh, and then the gains updated, and and finally the the states reached zero, and this is the inputs that were used. So after after, okay, so the batch length looks like it's eight or maybe not 10. Yeah, eight. So yeah, then it, it decided to really update itself and then eventually it brought the system to the, the origin. Okay, so there are, okay, so you already seen this. So one, one important thing in this with this is that we need to start with a gain that is stabilizing. So here I have a system Okay, and these are the weights and how many times I'm going to, uh, how many sampling instance I'm going to simulate it. So if I choose a gain of two, you can see here. So it's if, if it's two X, then this one, this coefficient of X will become greater than one. It's going to not stabilize it. And you can see that the states will actually blow up. Okay, so if you start with a stabilizing gain, then it, then it should, it, it will be fine. You can start with any stabilizing gain it will it will converge to the origin okay so if the system is unstable is unstable then we need to start with a stabilizing gain and i've observed that it may not just by just choosing any um, any initial value of gain it converges but it may not converge to the actual 
optimal solution. Okay, so we need to play around with the gains a little bit to get the actual optimal gain. And then for systems with disturbances, so in control theory, we have all physical systems, they in the real world, they experience disturbances. So again, here, we see that the system may not converge to the original solution just by choosing an optimal gain. Okay, so this is the optimal solution we are looking for. So we have to tweak the the gains, uh, uh, the initial gain a bit, for it to for it to come close to the optimal value. Okay, okay. So to 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 summarize this um, this technique, it's an iterative method to compute a controller without the knowledge of the system's dynamics. Um, the, the controller is simultaneously regulating the system and it's and it also is converging to the optimal gain and I showed you some limitations with the, the main thing is that you need to start with a stabilizing gain okay, and and uh, these are some additional resources so there's a there's a community post so in this uh, in I just showed the main points uh, I think that is with the main points you can understand how the controller works, but the community post goes into great uh, detail for, with the derivation. So it, it explains everything step by step. It explains the structure of that kernel matrix. So you can you can see that entire derivation uh, in all its uh, with all the details. And this is the function where you can get it from. This is the this is the function that is. Um, that computes the optimal gain based on the system's model. And this idea was taken from, from this uh, paper. So with that, um, I will conclude my talk.